Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection as usual. Um, today is a so-called gauss wanzel theorem, which is, well, let me say it this way, which is fascinatingly obscure. It's kind of a little bit of a weird statement. And there's this funny number that will turn up here. Um, and I really don't really know where it comes from. Well, I will show you where it comes from, but it's a little bit puzzling why it's exactly this number. And the guess at the moment, at least, is when we're talking about it's 2022. It's already 2022. Guess what? Um, the, the guess is kind of, kind of that this is kind of the biggest number that appears, but nobody really knows. It's a really fascinating, uh, fascinatingly obscure, as I said, theorem in, let's say, a Euclidean geometry, in some kind of classical geometry setup. So let's just jump right into it, right? So, um, Kind of a very classical question, already the question is a little bit obscure, uh, going back to the old Greeks. So the old Greeks like to do constructions with straight edge and compass. I'm not quite sure why did I know why, so it's a little bit, well, as I said, obscure. A link to um, a little discussion is in the description, so why would you actually come up with this definition? But anyway, these are the rules of the game, so let's have a look. So there are basically two kinds of rules. Um, and the division line is, is roughly here. So there's a well, left, a right side and the left side. And the game works as follows. So you have a certain number of rules that create points. Uh, so you have uh, points that create, you have points and you can create points. The creating points is on the right. And the way you do this is as follows. So you have a given number of points already. And you could just, just think that you have a kind of inductive game here. So you have a given number of points, and you should start with two points. And usually, and I will always do this in this video, I choose the points 0 and 1. And let's say we are in the plane somewhere. So we have some points in the plane, no matter what you call them, right? You could call them whatever. It's, it's no skating right now. So there's just, just a plane. So let's just call them 0 and 1, and whatever they are. So whenever you have points, you can play the following game. You can use your straight edge um, to draw a line between those points, right? You can draw the line between those points. Or you can use your camp compass to draw a circle around one of the points where you kind of uh, use the compass to get the, the radius um, given by the distance between the two points. So that's kind of the construction side. So, so you can, can construct um, either a line or a circle. Right? So construct a line or a circle. On the other hand, you can also get points, points, and you can get points by intersecting lines. So you have constructed a few lines, and you can add the point in the intersection to your collection of points, right? You should think of that we have a collection of points that we want to make bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, similarly, for intersecting circles or intersecting lines and circles. So it's kind of an intersection game here, so intersection. Okay, so you can construct lines and circles using the given points, and you can intersect lines and circles to construct new points. Right? So the kind of idea here is that these are the rules of the game. As I said, nobody, I think nobody really knows why the Greeks did that, but it's kind of a very classical question in Greek geometry, so 2,000 plus years old, which makes it interesting by definition somehow because, uh, well, it's an old, it's an old question. Um, so here you go. Um, so you can create lines, you can create circles, and you can intersect them, and you can create points, and you make your back of points bigger and bigger and bigger in every step. And the classical question here is, what kind of constructions can you do in the plane using only those rules, right? Nothing else is allowed. You just have those rules to play around with, and you want to construct for example, polygons. That's kind of the classic question I would like to address here. You would like to construct polygons from just two points. So what you need to do, of course, is you need to construct the, the points for, for the endpoints of the polygon. Right? So let me give you an example. So the regular triangle is probably the first polygon you want to consider. So regular triangle is roughly the shape. Uh, well, the, the illustration that I stole is much nicer, of course, than my attempt of drawing it. But anyway, um, so you have two given points. And then this illustration, the starting points are just named A and B. Uh, I named them before 0 and 1 doesn't really matter, doesn't make a difference. So kind of this line is given, strictly speaking, let me say it again, um, the two points are given, but you can always draw a line between them. So the line is in some sense given as well. And you would like to construct, so black is given, and you need to construct blue, right? As soon as you have constructed C, the kind of the point, as soon as you've constructed C, you can always draw the lines between them. 
So you only need to construct the endpoints of your triangle. And the way you do it here, I will run an illustration, uh, which is has really nice. You can do it online yourself in a second. Um, when I come to the square, the square is a little bit more complicated, but in this case, it's not so hard. So you use A and B, you draw a circle around them roughly like, well, no, I, sh I shouldn't really do this. Um, roughly like this and this, and they intersect. They're yeah, really great picture. I'm very happy. <laughs> so it's completely skewed. Anyway, the intersect in C. So you have constructed C because you can now take the intersection point to your back of points and you're done. And um, well, this is really easy and <laughs> you could have cut, uh, well, maybe I would have been able to come up with this myself, but this is certainly known for, for a long time. Okay. And kind of the classical question is, okay, you can construct the triangle. What about other polygons? As I said, no worries. I will run illustrations in a second, but let me just uh, give you the square as well. So you can already see it's a bit more complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward if you see the illustration. You kind of need to construct the right angle and uh, whatever, so this one here, and whenever you have a certain set of rules, like those simple rules, what you should first do is come up with some propositions, some rules that follow from the rules and constructing regular, uh, sorry, constructing um, 90 degree angles. So a kind of orthogonal line. That's something you can come up and you should probably first proof in some kind of lemma. You first proof a lemma, you can always do that. And as soon as you've constructed this orthogonal uh, line here, you're basically done with the square. And it's again, this is known for millennia. And, and then it looks like you can really construct all polygons. I will show you some more polygons in a second, but let's first do a uh, triangle in an animation in the square. So here's the animation. First, the triangle. I will run it in a second. Link to everything is in the description. This, this page is really nice. It lost lots of those uh, animated uh, straight and compass constructions. So you construct first the line. You spend in your compass. Um, you do the two circles. Uh, exactly the illustration from before, and you're basically done, right? You have constructed the point upstairs, and you just connect them. So let's run it once more. So the line is given because the points are given, right, by the, the roots of the game. The points that are given, the line is then given, and suck, you, you do the, your, your little circle, and you don't even need to draw the whole circle. And you've constructed that point, and you're done. So, not very hard, right? This is relatively easy. Um, the square is not much harder. So, let's take a look at the square. Same starting position, right? The line is given because you have two given points, and you get going. The first thing you can do is you can kind of um, use the rules to construct the, the orthogonal line. You will see it in a second how it works. Um, here's the compass again. And in a second, you have constructed the yes, perfect. Now you have constructed the point, which is orthogonal, and, and you're basically done from this step. And as I said, the first lemma you would kind of prove is that you can always do that. And then you could kind of use your back of lemmas to construct more and more uh, polygons. Um, and now you've constructed, well, the, the, the first uh, vertex of the square, and then of course you're done. Okay, so let's run it once more. It's a little bit more elaborate than the triangle, but it's not so hard. If you believe the first step that you can construct the right angle, right? So the 90 degrees angle. So half of this animation is just about constructing the, the right angle. Okay, so here we go and we're almost done. There you go, and there you go. And this is the right angle, or let's say the orthogonal line. And as soon as you have this orthogonal line, the rest is just, it's just not hard anymore because you can always, of course, uh, just construct those points. You're done because you now have what, whatever. You would need radius one or something like that, depending on the distance of your points. And as I said, in my notation, they should be probably zero and one. Cool. So you have constructed the square. And later, I will show you the construction of the Pentagon, which is a little bit more elaborate, uh, but it's again known for millennia. And you might guess that absolutely every polygon is constructible in this, in this sense. Why not? Seems to be a fair guess. And then there comes this obscure theorem, the gauss wanzel theorem, which says the following. So let's have a look. So the gauss wanzel theorem says, exactly gives an if and only if answer to the problem we are looking for. Well, the regular angle is constructible. And constructible means now with straight edge and compass, of course. If and only if something happens for n. OK, if and only if there's a power of 2 involved, 2 to the k for some k, I don't care. So the, the k is not important. So you can always construct the, because you can kind of always construct the orthogonal if you want. You can easily construct a square, 
or an 8 gun, a 16 gun, a 32 gun, and so on. So that's not a pro problem. So the 2 to the K is a little bit boring here. We can kind of ignore it. And then it comes to this product of PI up to P PT. And these are distinct Fermat primes. And those Fermat primes are primes of the form 2 to the 2L plus 1. So for example, 5. Uh, 5 is a Fermat prime. Uh, 3 is a Fermat prime. 5 is a Fermat prime. 17 would be the next one. So I'll show you the construction of the 17 gun as well. And then they grow very, very fast because you have 2 to the 2 to the something, of course. And the last known Fermat prime is this, well, very strange number, 65537. Uh, so this is the last known Fermat prime. Nobody knows whether there are other Fermat primes. Um, I'm pretty sure that people have tested it up to, I don't know how many digits, but it seems like this is the last last prime of the form Two to the two to the l plus one, and then this theorem is actually a, a theorem that says almost no polygon is constructible, which I find a bit surprising because if you do the low dimensional polygons, whatever that means, the low polygons with a low number of edges, um, it looks like almost everything is constructible. So here's my uh, so this is kind of the upshot: almost no polygon is constructible, and these are my plots using Mathematica. So it starts off pretty well. So here's the number of edges. Uh, the number of sites that goes from left to right, that's the x-axis, and the percentage of um, polygons that are constructible is on the y-axis. And as you can see, it, so these are the first 50 and these are the first 500. As you can see, it starts off like everything is constructible. And this was the beginning that I showed you. And it kind of drops roughly in this fashion, as you can see here. Um, so here, this animation here is a 0 0.5. So roughly, let's say roughly about uh, 40, uh, only, only well, 20 of the first 40 are polygons are constructible. And at 500, it's basically not visible anymore. So 0 0.2 is maybe around 200, doesn't matter so much. Uh, so 0 0.2, 20% of the first 200 polygons are actually constructible. It's almost no of them are constructible. And kind of in the end, it turns out that the only ones that are constructible, because these numbers apparently are very finite, right? So there are only five of them. Um, so you can kind of construct the biggest one. And the rest are just powers of two, which I pretty find a pretty, pretty surprising statement. And it all boils down to constructing the uh, triangle, uh, the pentagon, which I'm going to show you, and uh, the 17 one, which I'm also going to show you. I'm not going to show you the, the, the 275 gun, uh, 57 gun. Um, and I'm also not sure going to show you the construction of the big one. But because this is really not, not easy. So um, someone has done that in their PhD thesis. So this is the name of the paper or the thesis, whatever. Here's the number again. Um, and it, it took quite a while. It took quite a while. It's a, it's a mammoth task as a PhD thesis. Um, but this guy, apparently, uh, they were actually, <laughs> I don't know, uh, very patient and constructed all, whatever, 65537 five, edges of um, this, this funny gun. It took a while, as I said. It's a mammoth task for a PhD thesis. You shouldn't do that if you want to write a PhD. That's not a good topic. Um, in the end, nobody really cares because you've already proven that it's possible. Um, to do it explicitly is, is something different, but in the end, just too complicated. Nowadays, a computer, of course, can do it in uh, whatever, blink of an eye. Um, but uh, during this time, it was um, 1894 when they finished. It was a mammoth task, as I said. Um, okay, so the pr problem here is that the theorem is non-explicit. It's ex an existent theorem. It's an if and only if, and you could, you can do the construction if your end is of a certain type of number, but it doesn't mean you can actually write down explicitly a construction. And so you still need to do that. Uh, the three and the five gun are ancient. I'm going to show you the five gun in a second. We have already seen the three gun. The 17 gun is actually due to Young Gauss. Um, is at least contributed to Young Gauss. And it took a while, as you can see, so the old Greeks already did that. And it took up to whatever, 1800 to construct the 17 gun. And afterwards, it was relatively fast. Um, and after decades of work, as I said, don't do that as a PhD, you see this, but uh, they actually did here. <laughs> uh, after decades of work, this was explicitly constructed. This was before computer times, I say it again. So by hand construction, of this 65537 gun, which is already a too big number for me to think about anyway. 
Um, anyway, to finish, let me show you the construction of the 5-gon and the 17-gon, which are more complicated, as you will see. So let's start again with the Pentagon. Um, well, not again, let's start with the Pentagon. And here we go. Um, it will take a while, so let, let's, let's keep it running and let's just enjoy it. Um, so you do the usual construction to use only circle and uh, straight edge to construct various points. And as you can see, this will take a while before it's done. Um, it goes on and on and on. Takes a while. The 17 gone will be even worse. The 17 gone, uh, which will be Mathematica demonstration, which is linked in the description, has 14 different steps and it probably skips a few steps. So if you really want to understand the details, which I really can't recommend, um, as I said, it's kind of a kind of a little bit of a useless task. Um, you, you can actually have a look at yourself because everything is linked in the description. Um, the point about the theorem is actually that it opened, kind of it gave an algebraic description of the problem. And in the end, you can uh, kind of prove it using field extensions, which is pretty cool. So now the four, five edges are constructed and you just need to connect them all up. And the rest is kind of pretty straightforward, of course. And here you go. This is already not so easy. And the Pentagon is done. Very nice. So here is now uh, the 17 gone. Um, it's constructed in 14 steps. And here you can click through it. It's not as nice as the other illustration, but you can kind of see what's going on. You can construct all of these circles and then uh, the orthogonal lines that you already know. And as soon as you have constructed kind of those two points, you're good to go anyway. So now you're basically done and you can just connect them up. And now you've constructed all the points and then you're of course done, you just connect them. Okay, so let me wrap up this, uh, as I call it, obscure theorem. It's really a little bit strange. It's about constructing regular n-guns. And as I said, kind of point for me at least is you do this for small n-guns, the triangle, the square. Maybe you dare to try the pentagon. The pentagon is already a little bit more complicated. Um, or you can try the six gun, which still works two times three, right? You have a power of two and three is a Fermat prime. You can do that. Uh, it's not so hard to construct the eight gun. You could convince yourself relatively easily that you can't construct the seven gun. So seven gun is the first one that drops out. And well, in the end, it looks like most polygons should be constructible. And then comes the theorem, which basically tells you only powers of two are constructible. You have those. Maybe that only five of those are Fermat prime numbers. So you basically can ignore them in the overall uh, scale of number of constructible polygons and almost no polygons are constructible. But it's just kind of a cool result in the end. As I said, a little bit obscure because the question is already obscure to begin with, but the result is pretty cool. And the main point is it kind of opened the study of field extensions in the end, which is in the end more important um, then the question itself. And this is usually how good mathematics works. You have an old question, you solve it using new methods, and actually the method you used was more important uh, than the well, the, the your solution to the to the problem itself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.